So yesterday, or the past few days, we have started to explore the second part of right intention, the intention of goodwill. So firstly, we start with how goodwill opposes intention of ill will, thoughts governed by anger and aversion. And then we explore the remedy to ill will, which is called metta. We distinguish metta from sensual love, as well as the love involved in personal affection. The love in metta does not hinge on particular relations of particular persons. And the development of metta is called metta bhavana, meditation on loving kindness, which is what we just did in the last 15 minutes of today's sitting. So we start with metta towards oneself, ourselves, and next step, we extend it to others. So we find that the basic urge of our being is to wish to be happy and free from suffering. Firstly, for ourselves. And then after observing this for ourselves, we also understand that Everyone shares the same wish, the same basic wish. We all want to be happy, well, and secure. So we develop meta towards others and then imagine, imaginatively share the uh, wish for happiness. We use our own desire for happiness as the key, experience this desire as the basic urge for others, and then come back to our own position and extend to them the wish that they may achieve their ultimate objective, that they may be well and happy. Yes, so the last paragraph is also uh, what we did in the last 15 minutes. And initially we start with ourselves and then we start to extend it and then eventually to hostile persons as well, yeah. For people who you have quarreled with, you disagreed with, uh, or even public figure that is uh, quite, how do you say, repulsive. <laughs> Hitler, Donald Trump, like, and those people who is uh, anti-vaccination. Oh, this one is a bit sensitive. Huh? <laughs> is there anti-vax in this group? Oh, okay. No, no. So not ask sensitive question. Okay, and as so yesterday show me uh, ask a really good question, then what about those people who are unable yet to love themselves? So uh, Sister Jolene helped to answer her question, but I also mentioned that I want to play a clip by Venerable to 10 Children that helps me tackle this issue of low self-esteem, that self-loathing or self-critical, not in a constructive way, but in a negative way. So this is the clip. It is given on 2018 in Buddhist fellowship. So it was before COVID. We have 15 more minutes for questions. Vulnerable. Um, I heard about your, uh, your teaching on loving kindness and compassion. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to clarify that uh, to eradicate compassion actually helps to eradicate you will. Am I right to say that? E eradicate what? You wills like greed, anger, will. and jealousy. Will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, compassion is an antidote to a lot of things. If you have ill will of somebody towards someone, you're wishing them harm. If you have compassion towards somebody, you're wishing them to be free of suffering. What about loving kindness? How, do, how does, you yeah. know? Loving kindness also works, you know, because with loving kindness, you want them to have happiness in its causes. Yeah, so both love and compassion can counteract ill, Ill will. Thank you. Okay. Compassion 
also works against low self-esteem. So if we have a problem with self-esteem, yeah, not believing in ourselves or criticizing ourselves a lot, His Holiness proposes compassion as an antidote to it. Okay. Why? Because when we have low self-esteem, all of our intention, attention is focused on ourself. I'm so bad, I'm so terrible, I messed up. Again, I messed up. No wonder nobody loves me. I'm never going to get a job. I'm totally a failure. Okay? So low self-esteem and guilt, they all, they're totally focused on me. Compassion focuses on other living beings. Yeah. When we focus on other living beings, this very unhealthy self-focus disappears. Okay? And so in that way, compassion can help us remedy low self-esteem because we're looking at other people's situation instead of ruminating and exaggerating our own. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's the clip. I think it helps me a lot, so I'm not sure how you guys like it. What do you think? Show me. Um, I, I think that I've always appreciated Venerable Children's uh, teachings. Um, I, I think... Uh, the, the theory of it is important. Uh, the difficulty for people who are used to self-judgment, self-critique, almost as a second nature, uh, is the practice, the process, going through the process of the untraining themselves and rewiring themselves. I think that's where... Um, Helpful resources will be will be appreciated, I think, by many people. Yeah. Not enough is emphasized during the routine process of uh, loving kindness. I think there are sufficiently, I mean, there's a lot of people who suffer this, although they may not say so. And I think uh, if teachers, if Dharma teachers could include the process of rewiring, that would be very helpful. I say this because I attended a secular program recently called Mindful, Mindful Self-Compassion. And I think that, uh, that that program is very helpful. Uh, it's one example of helpful programs that in rewiring people who are like that. But I think the, the, the more, uh, what I really appreciate is this reminder that when you are, uh, when you don't like yourself, when you have low esteem, like what Venerable said just now. Oops. Everything on yourself is all about yourself. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Shomi. Okay. So I think we can get started on our materials. Uh, okay. Litwai has comments. Uh, yes, <laughs> also relating to this, I remember I uh, listened to uh, a talk or a Dhamma talk some, some time uh, quite long ago. And I remember uh, some person also had this same question that they uh, always criticize themselves and they don't see anything good about themselves and they are so uh, low esteemed. And I remember the venerable also asked them, so are you living with anyone? And they say, no. And uh, the venerable says uh, that one of the problems with people who live uh, all by themselves, <laughs> like me, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, not the case. Anyway, so they say that um, it is a good idea for you to start working with someone taking care of someone, even if that person is not living with any uh, family members, for example, try to go out and help in any way at all, to anybody at all, you know, do some volunteer work. 
just to be with someone. And from there, they can generate some kind of compassion or some, uh, you know, share some kind of interest with someone else. And that will be very helpful because they will think less about themselves. And therefore they will feel uh, less guilty. They feel less, uh, you know, self-esteem or low esteem, uh, something like that. So they say that, you know, it is always a good idea to start with working with someone. Uh, not just, um, you know, be in your comfort zone and just think about yourself all the time. So I remember that is one of the kind of uh, advice. Okay. Yeah, and who gave the talk? I don't remember. <laughs> I listened to many, so I don't remember. But that is one of the advice that I, I still remember now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. I think Sanjay raised her hand just now. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, thank, thanks, Marcel, for sharing that clip. Um, as I watched the talk, I, I had two thoughts. At first, um, this venerable said we should um, divert the attention away from ourselves when we're feeling um, low self-esteem. Then I had a question. Isn't it that when we have low self-esteem, then precisely we need more love, right? Um, we don't have enough love, that's why we don't have, we, we feel so needy and we have low self-esteem, but as she speaks more, I feel that it makes more sense. Um, I remember Shifu once said that our mind can only have one thought at a time, so when we think of other people's well-being, um, it doesn't necessarily generate more love for, for ourselves, but it directs the attention away from this spiraling downhill kind of negative thoughts. So yeah, I appreciate you sharing. You're very knowledgeable. Thanks. Okay, glad, glad you like it. Yeah, because when I watch that clip, it helps me a lot to uh, you know, overcome my own low self-esteem yeah, and self-critical because I was exactly like that three years ago. But that clips it is my turning point. Uh, yeah. So did you feel better? Did you feel that the need for more? Uh, did you feel a need for more love or attention at all? Uh, not exactly. Because after I realized that I was actually being selfish, you know, focus a lot on myself, then I understand that it is not a good thing to do. Being you know being selfish and being so self critical. It it. In fact, it actually stems a lot from I want people to recognize me and my effort and all those stuff. That's why I have this issue. Yeah. But after this, after and after some reflection and contemplation, I feel that mm, that's not exactly right. And in fact, actually, I think not many people would think of me that way because I think most people are also usually focus on themselves. And <laughs> so I don't really have to worry about people not liking me or think low of me, yeah. You know, one example is that when we take group photo and then when we see the photo, so <laughs> which, which person do you first look when you take a look at the photo? <laughs> I don't know about you, but you know <laughs> Yeah, show me. <laughs> myself. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> I, I always look at myself. Do I look good? <laughs> but actually, no one really cares whether I look good or not. Yeah. Because everyone cares whether they look good or not. So <laughs> we all only look at ourselves. Yeah. So we are so focused on ourselves. So I people don't really notice whether I'm doing good or bad. Yeah. Usually, yeah, most of the time. So that's how I start to gradually recover my esteem. Okay, thanks everyone for sharing. I think today is a pretty lively <laughs> discussion. A lot of people participated. Anyone else maybe? Like maybe we can just dedicate today towards sharing. We don't have to read extra materials. Anyone would like to share? Maybe 
Mm. Mili, would you like to share anything? Um, oh, well, as you all discussed, I just thought that human is quite interesting. I mean, we humans are quite interesting being. We, we, we want, like, uh, just now as I said, we, we, we feel that we need love, right? Then we go and seek for love. And yet in that process of saying I'm lack of love, you know, what to do and, and look inwards and then um, in a way you're like suffering yourself, you know? We are like always doing things that's opposite, not very wise. We, we seek love and we chase for it, then we don't get it and then we run the wrong way. And in fact, then you, you should actually die divert your attention to, to, to help others, then actually you feel good. So that part, we don't know. So we really need all these, I feel, dharma to keep reminding ourselves that um, we are born like that, you, you know, but we, because of all these yawns of accumulation of defilements, uh, ignorance, that we leave the other way. <laughs> so we create a lot of difficulty for ourselves. So I find these sessions of like um, reading dharmas, um, listening to the good teachers, um, the right dharma is very important every day or every week. Have some time just to so tune us back to the right course. You know? So, so this is something that came to my mind. Okay, thanks, Billy. Okay, maybe I ask someone who is pretty quiet to share. <laughs> How about Sister Choi Kwan, you have anything to comment on? Okay, um, from my experience, okay, uh, when I was young, it's like my life is so busy taking care of the family and trying to make a living and things like that. Uh, and because of that, I have not been in touch with uh, the Dharma or the, you know, the the Buddha. So until after, um, during the period when after I retired and during the period when my husband was uh, uh, struggling with cancer, and that was a time when I went in and seek for spiritual help uh, and uh, to seek for peace. And after his passing, uh, with my time, I uh, do befriending work now. And I find that um, I used to be all about myself, about my family, but I find that there are a lot of people out there who need our help. And it really brings satisfaction to me and uh, happiness as well. And also it helped with my compassion, I would say. It built up my compassion and loving kindness because when you look at the people and you're helping them, uh, you can feel that you're so lucky that you have a family, you know, who take care of you. Yeah, that, that's my sharing. Thank you. So sorry to hear about your husband. Okay. Okay, to wrap it up, how about we, can we hear from Sister Aikim? You have any comment? Uh, I think everyone is right that at one point of time in our life, we are actually very egoistic. Uh, from young, I think we all have everything is mine. I want this, I want to do this. Uh, when, you, when you are leading a project, uh, you are the center of you. This is what I want to do, you know. So as I embrace Buddhism, learning all this, slowly actually all these changes. Um, there's no more such things as, okay, everybody must follow your way. So it really, I'm very grateful that, you know, I came into uh, uh, learning Buddhism and it helps my life. That's it. So. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing, Thank you. Okay, I haven't called some of you, but any of you would like to add on anything before we wrap up? Yeah, maybe Esther, Xinghui, Sai Kiang, uh, Tammy. No? Okay. 
Okay, then if not, I think we can wrap up for today. Tomorrow we will continue with the third, uh, third kind of right intention, the intention of harmlessness. And then we can see how it uh, complements with the intention of goodwill. So let's do a dedication. Dedication of merits. Yen Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Lao. Yen De Chi Hui Chen Ming Liao. Pu Yen Zhi Zhang Si Xiao Chu. Shi Shi Chang Sing Pu Sa Dao. Amitabha. Till we meet again, may we be guided by the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. And have a confident day ahead. Not a low self-esteem day. Thank you, um, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, before that, I have a few announcements. So yesterday, Esther actually messaged me uh, asking about whether how to take the eight precepts, but we don't have a teacher right now. So uh, tomorrow, I think uh, if some of you are keen, we can take it informally just among ourselves. So I am thinking that we should just recite similar to how we recite the five precepts, but with the additional three precepts. So those of you who would like to observe, we can do it after the session ends. So at around eight, yeah, because some of you who are not interested to observe can make a move first. And then the rest who would wish to observe, we can recite together. So that's the first one. And secondly, I have uh, intended to do like a private screening of the, the clip that I gave just now. It's just a short one, but I intend to do the whole screening. And that will be on Friday, 9.30 p.m. 